and hello there! I'm Funky Monkey, and welcome to another edition of Funky Monkey at the Movies. With me as ever is my nameless producer. Hello. And tonight, we've got a magic word to share with you, because we've been to see Shazam! I'm going to get this out of the way straight away. I really expected there to be more punching of Dr. Savannah. Wasn't there enough punching? I mean, I mean there was some punching. Mm, but you know how I get. I really like to see furious violence, even if you're 15 years old. Lord alone knows, when I was 15, I would have punched someone who tried to boss me around repeatedly if I'd had those powers. Which is probably why I should never have had those powers. Yeah, that's probably why you never would have got those powers. Yeah. Because you might have used them for evil. I don't know about evil, but possibly for revenge. Yeah. Which is what they were hinting at with Black Adam, which is why Dwayne Johnson was one of these uh, executive producers, which I noticed. Yeah, I heard he was supposed to play Black Adam in it as well, but I guess that didn't happen. Yeah, there was talk about a Black Adam prequel happening, but that isn't happening now, or maybe it is happening, and it's still in pre-production. Was Black Adam supposed to be the... One they mentioned at the beginning who was the original champion who used his powers for revenge or something there. Yep, yep, that was him. Right. Of course, later on, Black Adam would use his powers to rebuild the nation of Kandak. And of course, in DC Universe Online, there is a dungeon, well, an instance, wherein he tries to use his powers alongside the sorcerer, possible necromancer Felix Faust, to resurrect his lost love, Neferitos, or something. You know, that's uh, Black Adam. He has his own reasons. But anyway, back to Shazam the movie. It had its fun bits. I definitely like the part where Captain Marvel gave his powers to all of his foster siblings. Yeah, I mean, that was okay. But it uh, just raises the question now. Are they in the same universe as the, um, the Justice League and all the, all the other DC people that we see? And in which case, if they are, why do we actually need the Justice League now? Because we've got seven Shazam slash Captain Marvels or whatever to take their place. Well, you know, it's actually a departure from the comics. Because in the comics, uh-huh. it was only ever Mary and Freddy that got the Marvel, the Captain Marvel Shazam powers. Right. Now this movie has struck out on its own with giving these, uh, all of these brand new characters, these new powers. Although, I have to wonder how Billy got Superman to turn up to the school. Ah, uh, well, you know, Superman is supposed to be suffering for all that kind of thing. He always turns up at schools or saves kittens or whatnot. Eh. Although... He was very good towards Billy Batson in uh, the graphic novel First Thunder, which was a Superman Shazam crossover. Yeah, so. I like Zachary Levy in it because I'm a big fan of Zachary Levy. I enjoyed him in Chuck. I thought Chuck was good. And he was just as good in this, I thought. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty funny in places. I mean, you had the whole uh, journey as he kind of becomes more, because he was kind of that kid who was out on his own, and just looking after himself, and then he kind of yeah, embraces, street tough. Yeah, embraces his foster um, siblings and gives them power as well, and kind of stands up as a villain, but he's kind of been running away. And there came a day in which Billy Batson bestowed the power of the champions upon his siblings, learning the greatest truth of all, to fight the villain that he could not face alone. Or something. Yeah, sure. Mark Strong was okay. Eh. Not spectacular. Well, let's not forget that this is the second bite at the cherry for him, being that he was Sinestro in Green Lantern. Was he? He was. Okay. Wasn't he CGI? That's uh, probably why you know. No, he was. 
he was actually he did actually have some measure of prosthetics. Uh, I mean, he was like well, he was in the bank of the anyway. Yeah, Corrigarian. Yeah, well, and he uh, kind of terrible. But I've forgotten that guy who played the wizard. He's turning off in a lot. Jimon Honsu. Yeah, he is. he's turning off in a lot of superhero films lately. Yeah. He was apparently in Aquaman somewhere. Somewhere. As like a fisher man king or something. And yeah. obviously he was in Guardians of the Galaxy. And yeah. then he prized his role of the same character in Guardians of the Galaxy but in Happy Marvel. Yeah. So he was a Kree. Yeah, I think he must have been. See, now that's a one shot that I would like to see. That's a one shot I'd like to see. That guy's story. Somebody get on that? Marvel? Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's kind of weird, but like, in the comic books, there's a Kree. As far as like ethnicities were, there were like pink Kree and blue Kree. There were never like black Kree. Well, so, unless he was like a mercenary or something. Oh, well, who knows? Yeah. But still, yeah, but yeah, if you had the one shot, that would tell the tale. But anyway, back to Shazam the movie. The um, them seven deadly sins, I suppose, were interesting. But, I mean, they were, they were like scary monsters, but they were kind of bit generic looking. There's nothing in that particularly made them stand out with being like of the seven deadly sins. Uh, again, I've been spoiled by uh, DCU Online. The uh, fourth chapter, Sons of Trigon, features the sons of a demon, each of whom are uh, an embodiment of a se- of uh, one of the seven deadly sins. I mean, the C- CGI of them was quite good, but I don't know. They weren't particularly outstanding. Yeah. I mean, the kid actors weren't too bad. I mean, normally you just think, oh god, kid actors. But they weren't too bad. That's another thing that I didn't like. There were too many bullies. And those two were uh, briars, I think. Uh-huh. Whoever they were. Uh-huh. They didn't really get much of a comeuppance. Like being suitcase wedged. When, uh, and their truck got destroyed. I mean, they are kids. You're not supposed to go around brutalising children. <sighs> Even if they were like 15, 16, 17 or something. Yeah, well... If you're going to be a jerk in a movie, I would prefer to see you brutalised. I kind of saw the thing with his mum coming, though. Like, when they got split up and then he didn't see her again until he managed to track her down. It's like, you don't accidentally lose your kid for X amount of years. Yeah. So I kind of, like, when that happened, I kind of got this feeling like she'd abandoned him. Yeah. It's sad. Well, he kind of helped cement his uh, connection to his adopted family. Mm. Yeah. Although, if we're talking about found family, I think that, for my money, Guardians of the Galaxy, perhaps Volume 2? Mm-hmm. Would be my preferred pick for a story of found family. Yeah, it probably could be better. I mean, this one was uh, Shazam was okay, but because it, it was like so many children in it. I say so many, but there were only like seven. Yeah. I mean, even saying that Mary was like eighteen or something, wasn't she? she yeah, was she was college. So yeah. She wasn't really a child. No, no, no. Well, generally, as I was saying with the um, child kids, uh, the child actors, the acting was pretty good. Generally, there was nothing really amazing about them or no. any of the performances. But they weren't bad. Special oh, yeah. effects generally were okay. The suit was okay. The electricity was okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. Hugely convinced by fake muscles on fake muscle suits to make them that good easy. I'm inclined to believe that a lot of the muscle suit was Zachary Levy himself. I have seen him posting Instagram stories of him in some pretty serious training. Yeah, well, in that case, he kind of like doesn't uh, handle muscles very well. Yeah. But hey, who knows? Maybe he did get really massive. And bus. Yeah. 
music was okay, but this is like yeah. nothing amazing. Yeah. I mean, for the big red cheese, you were expecting the sort of major chord hero themes. But then you can't go full Superman because you've already got Superman. Yeah. Which is half the problem. That back in the day, Captain Marvel, as he was from the Fawcett comics, was an actual... Was a lot like Superman. Yeah, he was a rip-off of Superman. That's why they sued him. That's why they sued them. That's why they ended up absorbing them. And that's why Captain Marvel exists in that uh, universe today. Yeah. Uh, The thing about Superman, Uh the thing you have to remember about Superman, Uh and the reason why you need him and the Justice League, Captain Marvel and the Justice League, Uh Superman, uh, at least in the comics, has always been vulnerable to magic. And lightning. And lightning? Yeah, it's supposed to stun him or something. Uh, it's what uh, I thought would beat him up. Uh, I thought should be able to beat him up. Yeah. Really. Or Storm. Yeah, she doesn't really have superpowers or magic. She's just a mutant with yeah. weather control. Yeah. She did have a um, Asgardian hammer at one point, and it gave her like a whole Asgardian suit, and that gave her kind of a bit more like Asgardian power. She was straight up Wonder Woman in the Amalgam comics. Yeah, probably. So anyway, I quite like the offbeat and humorous tone of the film too. Which, yeah. You know, the more it moves away from the Zack Snyder era kind of thing, the better. Because it yeah. just didn't work. Yeah, nobody likes the uh, dour Snyder era. Yeah. Which is why there is probably not going to be a funky monkey at the movies for the newly announced Joker film. No? No, no. Well, it's getting to about that time yeah. to give it the final score. Yeah. So, what are your final thoughts then? So, it was entertaining. The effects and everything were pretty good. Um, the acting was okay. It just, it didn't have a lot of things. It wasn't like amazing, but I still enjoyed it. And it's probably worth a watch. And a uh, score out of 10? For as powerful as Captain Marvel is, for as powerful as Shazam is, he didn't really do much in the way of violence, but then again, he's just a kid, and he's not me. And yeah, it's definitely a film that kids and families are really going to enjoy. Perhaps not the weeest of wee ones, but you know, it's kid wish fulfillment even at a 12 rating. It's kind of like big all the superheroes, or those sort of things. Yeah. Freaky Friday, or something. 13 going on 30. Yeah. But yeah, with superpowers. Yeah. But yeah, I'm still just going to give it a 6 out of 10. Okay. And seeing as there's really not much of a ladder, I'm guessing that you'd put it above Captain Marvel. I would indeed. My list would go Shazam at the top and then Captain Marvel. Uh, you know, uh-huh. I actually rated Captain Marvel higher. Yeah. But I'm going to go with you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to put Shazam above Captain Marvel. I think it had more heart, mm. and I just enjoy Zachary Lee more than that. Yeah. Plus, of course. That didn't really have, of course, Captain Marvel didn't really have, like, a final mano a mano slugfest either. You know, it, it's, it's a woman thing, and we're dudes. So, you know, we're gonna, I'm going to wrap it up before I ruin it for everyone. This has been Funky Monkey, and his name was Producer. Like, share, subscribe. Begging uh, links are below. Check the Minds page. Check the Minds page. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you for the end game. Bye.